Hey, what's going on guys? It's Raven here with some more Arma 3. This is uh, part two of the Alive tutorial. Um, so in this part, we're going to be going over the main uh, ones that you need, Alive Required, Alive Data, Alive Virtual AI System, and Alive Dynamic Weather. Um, so as you can see, we're playing on Altus. So um, we'll start with the dynamic weather really quick um, because uh, Altus is under the Mediterranean um, uh, area, I guess you could say. We'll just set that automatically to Mediterranean and then hit OK. That's as simple as that. Um, the options that you have is Mediterranean, Arid, Continental, Tropical, uh, Random, or Real. I usually don't use Real because Real uh, means that you have something down here. Um, and like I said, uh, you can use real world weather locales and whatnot, but um, it's really buggy and I don't really like using it. Um, but you can override, you know, the base weather, I guess you could say. Um, but for this example, just leave it as blank and we'll leave it on Mediterranean. So the weather will cycle um, however the weather cycles, which gives you that real-ish feel. Um, it might be sunny, it might be rainy, it might be super foggy, it might be overcast, so on and so forth. Uh, so for the virtual AI system, um, we want this set on persistent because you want the entities to um, keep doing what they're doing um, as the uh, mission progresses, I guess you could say. Uh, for synchronization ob options, um, I usually leave it as the default, which is only virtualized synced objects. Um, spawn radius, this plays a huge factor on your frame rate. Um, typically what I do, it's based off of map uh, size. So if you have a large map, you can have it boofed up to like 2,500 or 3,000 for the spawn radius. Or you could have it as low as, you know, 1,500. I can't type. There we go. But uh, the spawn radius is based off of troops on the ground and UAVs. So if you have a UAV, and uh, we'll, we'll hit OK really quick. If you have a UAV, say, circling this point right here, and its radius is two kilometers, so it'll circle all the way out to here and then down, so on and so forth, like within this given area. the uh, It'll spawn things around the outside edge up to uh, whatever we have the... Uh, virtual AI system set to. So if it's 2,500 meters, it'll be 2.5k out where entities will be spawned in. Um, so it's all your prerogative for this example. We'll have it set on 2,500, but you can have it set as low as, you know, a kilometer or 900 meters. It's up to you. I think the best spawn radius to frame rate aspect is... Uh, uh, anywhere between 1,500 and 3,000. Um, that way entities are spawned in before you get there. That way you don't walk into a village and stuff just poofs in behind you and you have a really bad day. Um, for spawn heli radius, this is for players in helicopters. Um, typically what I do is I have it set at 500, mainly because when a helicopter is in transit, We'll hit OK really quick so you can see what I'm saying. Say a helicopter flies from the airfield over to this airfield. And then along the way, there's AI that are spawning in. Um, so within 500 meters of that, so this is a kilometer, so half of this grid square across, it'll spawn AI in in this grid square. And then as it leaves this grid square, it'll despawn those. Um, that way it doesn't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you don't that way you're not leaving a trail of AI that are aren't doing anything they're just kind of spawned in so to speak um, so for the virtual AI system I use uh, 500 for the spawn heli radius and then I leave zero for the spawn plane radius mainly because jets fly fast and you don't want to leave a trail of spawned AI because uh, it'll be taxing on your server um, for the active limiter, it all depends on your prerogative. If you have a tank of a server, you can have it set at the default value. Typically what I do is based off of uh, a rough guesstimate of how many players we're gonna have. Um, 
this number refers to the amount of groups. Um, so a group could be one individual AI, or it could be a group of, or a squad of, uh, you know, nine to 15. So if you have a, at 144, you could have 144 individuals, or you could have 144 15 man squads. Um, so typically what I do is just based off of rough numbers, I usually leave it in between uh, 30 and 60, um, or I set it to 30 and 60. So for this example, we'll set it at 45. Seems like a reasonable number. Uh, for virtual unit speed, I usually leave this on none. That way the AI um, has a, um, or they're not limited in their uh, actual speed that they're uh, able to travel in basically. So like if you have it set at 25%, they're gonna move 25% of their normal speed. Um, and then 50%, they'll move at half the speed of their normal speed, so on and so forth. Um, the uh, virtual combat speed, I leave this on regular. That way, you know, combat isn't like, you know, super fast. It's, uh, you know, normal pace. The AI gets shot at. They return fire. They shoot back at you. And then, you know, it's like, a, okay, who's going to outmaneuver who before, you know, bad things happen. Uh, pathfinding, I usually leave this on no because it breaks shit. Um Infantry C transport also breaks shit. Um, basically, what it does is it tries to spawn in boats whenever an AI tries to cross a waterway. Um, and then smooth spawn. Smooth spawn is the sleep value, as it, the description says right there. I usually leave this at 0.3. That way, that's like the default value, and it typically works really well with their server. So this is all set over here. We're going to hit OK, and we're going to move over to a live data. Um, so before I get into this, I'm going to open up the Alive War Room. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is the Alive War Room. So um, this is where this stuff saves to. Um, there's a whole other video that I could do on how to set up the Alive War Room shit. It's really fucking finicky. Um, we had huge issues with it trying to open... Um, the account for our group and whatnot but basically what the alive war room does is it records literally everything in your uh uh in your game so like here zodes killed uh middle eastern militia um with an svd um he killed them at 275 meters with an m4 um then he killed another one at 275 meters, or 74 meters. Uh, Carrie killed another one at 33 meters with an M4A1. Um, bootleg died, uh, Carrie died, so on and so forth. Um, and then down here at the bottom, it tracks how much ammo was used by which weapon platform, um, weapon effectiveness, how many kills a vehicle's got, um, what type of vehicles you're using. Some of them don't have pictures and whatnot, but, you know, whatever. Um, and then it shows your unit effectiveness, like how many kills you got with which weapon platform, um, how many hours people have been in the game, uh, what type of factions are used, um, the vehicles, and then it has your quote-unquote tier one operators and whatnot. So it shows, you know, people that have, uh, like, all their kills and whatnot. Um, bootleg is one of our armor guys. He's up at the top. He's got fucking 98 kills like, like a fucking madman. Um, and then if you go over to your profile and whatnot, you can, uh, or not that, um, your stats shows how many hours you've played, how many operations you've been in, confirmed kills, how many times you've inj been injured or died, what your kill death ratio is, how many shots you've fired, so on and so forth. Um, and then it shows your flight time, vehicle experience, combat dives, dive time, para jumps, medical experience, so on and so forth, right? Uh, so back to Arma. Um, to have that all set up, right, you would have to set this guy up. Um, so the cloud is to the Alive War Room. Um, save mission time, I usually set this to yes when you're saving it as an admin. That way you can pick up exactly where you left off, basically. Um, so that's uh, that. Uh, save Roblox and Outpost. Um, 
you can do this if you have roadblocks and outposts spawned in. Um, it keeps them in the same location, so nothing changes. Um, so we'll just leave that on yes. Uh, enable, enable chat kill feed. I cannot not English today. Um, the uh, you can change this and whatnot. I usually leave it on none. Um, disable stats. Uh, I don't do this because if you disable the stats or disable the AAR, um, you won't be able to see the stuff on the war room on that website that I just showed. Um, I usually have these guys um, disabled and whatnot because there's if you're on a server that already tracks the performance and whatnot or you have it scripted or set up to track the performance of your server then you don't really need to you know do that via the war room um, but all of this is already set up you want it on the cloud you want to save the mission time you want to save roblox and outpost um, you don't want to enable the chat kill feed so leave that at none you don't want to do that uh, you don't want to do that you don't want to do that so on and so forth right so we're going to hit okay there for a live required this is the main uh thing that makes a live work um, other than the military AI commander and the objectives and whatnot uh, depending on how you're set up for the alive required this is what makes uh, a live work um, other than the military AI commander and then all of these guys over here um, so basically in layman's terms uh, when somebody joins in um, and they don't have a live or they have the wrong version of a live, you can set it up to kick people or warn them. I usually leave it on warn. Um, for AI distribution, depending on if you're running a bunch of headless clients or if you have a tank of a server, um, you can leave it on server or you can select headless clients. Um, I usually leave it on server and for this example, we'll leave it on server. Um, disable single player save. You don't want to have the ability for single player or individuals to be um, saving so to speak um, and it also says uh, having single player saving uh, can cause memory crashes um, use the local saving in a live instead so um, you want to leave this at the default yes because you don't want people able to save and whatnot um, you don't want to disable the advanced markers um, that way people can you know put markers on the map and shit um, and they're they're persistent so they'll stay around uh, admin actions you don't want to disable that because that's a way for the admin you as a server owner or whoever is running this mission file um, it allows them to be able to um, basically plan out a mission um, auto pause you don't want to uh, if you want to you can have this turned on um, but basically what it does is if you have auto pause turned on whenever everybody's off the server everything will stop like the AI will stop moving around it won't utilize any resources so on and so forth right um, I usually leave this on no because I want the battlefield to constantly evolve so say we went into an area and we just er eradicated everything next week or tomorrow when we're playing on it the AI can be back in that area um, and you know it, it's ever evolving like they're reinforcing that area so to speak um, for garbage collector I leave this at default but you can change the numbers um, basically what the garbage collection is it's a bit like the base game um, of garbage collection where it uh, uh, once amount of entities are reach this number then it'll start deleting them uh, typically we run Zeus that way it's a more uh, uh, personalized um, way of deleting bodies so if somebody who's playing on a laptop for instance starts having horrible frame rates you can go into Zeus and delete bodies to um, or delete dead entities to uh, you know assist that person that way you make them feel kind of special <laughs> um, and then same thing with the collection limiter um, uh, clutter types I don't do anything with this and then the alive tablet model is basically uh, what shows up when you're saving stuff at the end um, but 
this is all you need for the alive required. We're going to hit OK. Then we're going to take a break. And then part three will be the military objectives and stuff. Like I said in the first part, guys, if you're finding this to be helpful, uh, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you do subscribe, hit that little bell icon that we get notified every time I upload. Um, also, feel free to share this uh, playlist for the uh, live tutorial thing. Um, I think the most recent one that I saw on YouTube was like nine or so months ago. Um, so I figure I could, you know, make a slightly updated one with the uh, new updates. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, hope to see you guys in the next part. Cheers.